Hi everybody, and welcome to chapter 8. We will be looking at various things that are leading us into trigonometry for the next uh, couple units. And uh, we're going to start with something that you've probably done in the past, the Pythagorean Theorem. We're going to throw a couple new twists on it. Uh, but uh, pretty much uh, this is something you're going to recognize when you see it, if you don't already. Uh, so let's go from there. We're starting to, we're, we're looking at triangles and specifically looking in this case in the next couple of units at right triangles. So let's hit it. Uh, again, this is found in section 8.1 in your text and our objective is to use the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. All right, before we do that, let's do a quick review on square roots, because I know this is something that may have uh, you may not have done a lot of in algebra, but it's kind of important as we start looking at the Pythagorean theorem. So square roots. Some of them we know by heart, and I would encourage you to memorize these if you don't have them already. We want to look at things like 1, 4, 9, 16, those things that when we take them apart, we find that the factors, uh, factors multiply by each other by itself, to give that number. So the square root of 1 is 1. Well, square root of 4, that's 2 times 2. So the square root of 4 is 2, etc., etc., etc. And these are kind of important to recognize. 9, uh, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, etc. Listing them all on this sheet, on this page, all the way down, up to, down through the square root of 144, which is 12. All right? So some of those are easy to, to recognize. All right? Others... Well, there's nothing that multiplies by itself, or not a whole number that multiplies by itself to give us 2, or 3, or 5, or 6. So we can just leave those uh, in, in the radicals. There's no way to simplify these any more than they are unless we want to go with the decimal form. All right? I mean, we could plug into our calculator the square root of 2 and find out that it's like 1.41, I believe. Something like that. All right? But we can't really simplify it uh, other than other than to go to the decimal. So we just kind of sometimes just leave them the way they are. All right? Now, there's a third category, though. Others we can simplify because we look for those perfect squares, if I could type, we look for those perfect squares that we can take out, perfect squares that are among their factors. So, for example, 12. Well, 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is a perfect square. All right? So if 12 is 4 times 3, the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times 3. And that can be broken up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And we know the square root of 4 is 2. So we can simplify 12 to look like that. Okay? You can see some examples on some other things. 18 has a 9 in it. 9 is the, is the square of 3, right? So the square root of 9 comes out as a 3, and the 2 that didn't come out is left behind, all right? So you can follow these examples as well with 20, 24, 28, 32, okay? So this shows how to simplify and leave uh, 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 radical figures in simplest radical form. That's what we call this when we have all of the proper squares reduced out of it and leave in the radical whatever whatever can't be pulled out. So I hope that makes sense, guys, because we're going to be using it a bit. Now, here's some to try on your own. Pause if you wanted to give them a shot, and then I will reveal answers here shortly. Okay, here we go. This is good practice, guys, so if you uh, have any doubts, you might just want to make sure you understand where all this is coming from, okay? How to reduce these fractions, or these, uh, these radicals, into their simplest form. All right, so now we're ready for the Pythagorean Theorem. Here it is. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs, now the legs, remember, are the sides that are next to the lengths are, the, are the, 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 sorry, the legs are the sides that are adjacent to 
the right angles, so A and B are the legs. The hypotenuse, meanwhile, is across from the right angle. Okay? So, Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs, or A squared plus B squared, is equal to the square of the length of, this, of the hypotenuse, C squared. A squared plus B squared is C squared. Now, it's critically important that we always know which one is the hypotenuse. Again, it's always the longest side, and it's always across from the right angle. Okay, that's got to be the one that we list all by itself on its own side of the equal sign. Okay, the two legs are A and B, it doesn't matter which one's which. But the hypotenuse must be the one we call C. Okay, got to be the longest side, got to be the side opposite from the right angle. All right, so some combinations come out to be nice, perfect whole numbers, okay? These are called Pythagorean triples. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Nice all whole numbers, all right? And of course, we know 9 plus 16 equals 25. So this is a great example of a Pythagorean triple. Now, it's not necessarily important that you memorize these. 7, 24, 25 is another Pythagorean theorem because this holds true, or another Pythagorean triple because that holds true, 5, 12, 13. It's not necessarily important that you memorize the triples, but if you do, you can save yourself a whole lot of work. I know if I see this pattern, I don't have to plug it into my calculator. I know what that one's going to come out to be. And you know what? Your textbooks use these a lot, so they show up often. They'll come in handy if you know them. So here are four examples of Pythagorean triples. Okay? Uh, now, not only do the triples themselves work, but anything proportional to them works as well. So I already showed you the 3, 4, 5 works, but you know what? If I multiply everything by 2, 6, 8, 10 works also. So does 18, 24, 30, because this is still, if we divide everything by 6, in the ratio of 3 to 4 to 5. Okay? So all multiples if we have sides that are proportional to 3, 4, 5, those are going to make Pythagorean triples as well. Okay? So, here's your chance to do a little bit of work on some Pythagorean theorem problems. Pause. Answers coming shortly. Find X. Find Y. Here we go. Okay, so for X, nice and easy. 20 squared plus 21 squared equals X squared. Square them out. Add them together. Take the square root. Ooh, nice. 20, 21, 29. All whole numbers. There's another Pythagorean triple. Then for y, not so lucky. Also notice on, on this problem that we gave you the hypotenuse and are asking you to solve for a leg. So we had to set, up, set it up a little bit differently. 8 squared plus y squared gives me the hypotenuse squared. Again, remember the hypotenuse must be by itself on its own side of the equal sign. That's got to be the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, c part. All right. So 8 squared plus y squared equals 20. Solving it, uh, square both sides. Subtract the 64 now. Take the square root. All right. Square root of 336. Well, I know that. 336, or I can find out that 336 is the square root of 16 times 21, and that 16 can be simplified to a 4. So here's our answer for this problem. Okay, Moving on, a few other theorems. They all kind of go hand in hand. Know that the converse of the Pythagorean theorem also holds true, and that says if the sum of two sides of a triangle, you want to do that, sum of two sides of a triangle uh, is equal to the, sorry, the sum of the squares of two sides of a triangle is equal to the square of the length of the longest side, then that triangle is a right triangle. So if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we know the triangle must be right. In addition, we also know if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, the triangle is obtuse, and if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, the triangle is acute. Those are theorems 8, 2, 8, 3, and 8, 4, and we use them this way. Find out whether each of these side lengths is right or acute or obtuse. Well, here's the longest one. 
So we find out this 21 squared plus 25 squared. Is that equal to or greater than or less than 30 squared? Okay, and when we do the math, we are going to find out, well, that the value here is less than, so the sum of the two shorter legs is, is oh, sorry, greater than 900, and in that case, the triangle is acute. So try it with the other two. With these two sides, again, 58 is the hypotenuse, so we multiply the two. We find out that they're equal. The two shorter ones are equal to the square of the longer one. That means the triangle is right. And on the bottom here, longest side is the 75, so 40 squared plus 60 squared. Oh boy, in this case, it's less than C squared, so the triangle is obtuse. Make sense? All right. So next, we are done. Hope you enjoyed. We will see you all later.